One look at the YouTube thumbnail, and I'm pretty sure you can figure out what we're doing here today. I'm Ron Burke, Editor-in-Chief for GamingTrend.com, and I say if it's worth doing, it's worth overdoing. We're going to kick things off with a Z790 Aorus Master motherboard. Inside it, we're going to put an Intel 13900K processor. For GPU, none other than NVIDIA's RTX 4090. For RAM, we've got 32 gigs of DDR5 running 6000 mega textures, the Trident Z5 line. For power, we're going to use the Dark Power Pro 12 that's going to give us 1500 watts of clean power. To cool the processor, we're going to use the Pure Loop 2FX, that's a 360 millimeter AIO from, again, be quiet, what can I say? I'm a fan. Speaking of fans, for airflow, we're going to use the Lightwing series from, be quiet. For fun, we're going to throw in a little tiny screen to monitor everything, and with any sort of luck, all of this is going to fit inside this Silent Base 802. We've got a lot of unboxing to do and a whole lot of work. Let's get to it. There are a couple of things to keep in mind when doing any build. You'll notice I don't have any sort of anti-static uh, strap around my wrist, but what you can't see is I'm standing on an anti-static mat and I'm also using a wooden table that is grounded. So there's no chance of any static or at least very little chance of static damaging anything. It's very unlikely, but it's still something to keep in mind. We're gonna pull the motherboard out. It's in a nice little convenient tray, but another thing that people like to do, and I'm not quite sure why, is they wanna take these anti-static mats and use it as a build surface for the board. That's not a good idea for a number of reasons that I'm not gonna get into today, but just suffice it to say, don't do that. Inside the box, we obviously have the motherboard. This is a really handy thing. This is gonna give us all of our plugs for the case in one easy spot. It's a nice little what they call a G connector. We've got a couple of uh, hard drive cables. As a general rule, when you swap your board, swap your cable. Never reuse those things. They're too cheap to, to not swap. I've got some thermal leads. Those are important. You don't want to have thermal throttling inside your case, so these will help you at least detect it. More thermal leads, more thermal leads. It's almost like thermals have become a kind of important thing. This particular board has Wi-Fi, so it has this little shark fin. We'll need that at the end. That'll stick on top of the case. It's magnetized, so you can actually stick it in a number of different places. This is gonna be for RGB, if you're into that. We're gonna set that aside. That is the unboxing, other than one A or sticker. And, of course, instructions. We'll keep those handy, just for funsies. Because this is Aorus, they also come with a number of stickers. So if you're into that, there you go. So normally I'd be pointing out components on this motherboard and I'd be showing you in the booklet where those things are. Gigabyte, oh, this is it. This is what passes for a motherboard manual now. These used to come with manuals that you could flip through for reference. Now I guess you gotta keep your phone handy. Big thumbs down on that. One of the things you're definitely gonna need is thermal compound. Now, thermal compound, if it's any good, won't dry out, but that doesn't mean that you should keep it forever. In fact, this one is from 2019. Good manufacturers will label them, so you kinda know when you should be swapping it out. One of the things that you're gonna need that I didn't mention in the intro is thermal compound. Now, this is the stuff that lets the processor adequately push heat to your cooling solution, whether that's an all-in-one, that's an AIO, or some sort of fan uh, cooling block. We're going for speed, so we're gonna be using M.2 drives in this system. Underneath this really large heatsink is your very first M.2 slot. Now this particular one is special. There are a number of them underneath this other heat plate here, but this one is directly linked to the CPU. So this is gonna be your fastest slot. This is where you're gonna to wanna to put the things that you want to load the fastest. Me personally, I'm gonna put a two terabyte drive here, that's where my operating system is going to live and I'm going to partition part of it out for games and for a few other productivity tools that I use. Underneath the M.2, we have a metal reinforced PCIe slot. That's where our GPU is going to go. This is where the other M.2s are going to go. We'll touch base on this a little bit later because there's some warnings that I have to give you about additional M.2s. Underneath there, we have two more PCIe slots that are metal reinforced. The metal reinforcement is good for really heavy cards because you don't want any sort of sagging to occur. So no matter what board you buy, and there's all sorts of brand loyalty out there, 
at least go with one that has some metal reinforcement. That's really important. The one for the GPU, this particular model has a push button right here. This push button releases the M.2 slot here. These little tabs, I don't know why they keep using them, but they're meant to lock the device in place. These snap off. I, I don't think I've owned a board that these haven't snapped off. Now I obviously change things out quite a bit. You've seen my reviews. I'm always pulling things in and out of my system. So maybe I'm just a little bit more abusive than most, but these things tend to break off. Thankfully it doesn't impact anything, but it is nice to be able to eject the GPU with just a single push of a button. This particular board is DDR5, so we have four DDR5 slots right here. There are DDR4 versions of this board and many others that are LGA1700. That's the socket type for the processor. But the price of DDR5 has dropped enough where it's now reasonable. There's really no reason to go backwards. Now you may see four slots and think I need to buy four sticks of RAM. Well, hold that thought. That's actually gonna make your system slower. There's a whole article on Gaming Trend on why that's the case, but just trust me when I say tighter timings and higher capacity and a kit of two is always gonna be better than four. Now, where do you put them? Conventional wisdom says I put them in slot one and two closest to the CPU, right? Well, no. In fact, it goes in slot two and four. Now you're gonna to have to check your manual if it comes with one gigabyte, but in this particular case, it's gonna go there and there. And obviously if you add more RAM, you're gonna put it in this one and this one. These are marked A2 and B2, with the unused ones being A1 and B1. Now I mentioned in the beginning that there's really no right or wrong way to assemble a system. There is an exception and I think it's this. You never really know how big your cooling solution is gonna be until it's way too late. As such, we're gonna put in our memory now. We're also gonna put our storage in now. Your AIO or your air cooler may actually extend beyond the top of your memory. So clearances start to matter and you start to have trouble getting access to certain memory modules. So it's better to slot those things first or do a lot of research beforehand. I've gone ahead and unscrewed the M.2 cooler. Do not forget to take off the protective plastic. This is not gonna help you cool. So we're gonna go ahead and remove that and throw that away. I am not thrilled with that. Looks like that's actually the uh, little screw that holds down the uh, M.2. In this case, there's actually a really neat system that's really different, and I've only seen it on a few boards. So this has kind of a twist latch here instead of a screw. Those screws are a nightmare. You drop those things, they're gone. So this has a little uh, latch that holds the M.2 in place. And instead of fighting with the screw, you just push that in and out. That's really great for uh, systems where you end up having to swap out memory. And if you've ever dropped one of those screws, you know A, how hard it is to find them, and B, how hard it is to replace them. So again, we're gonna remove that plastic. That will not help your cooling. So make sure you take that off. The M.2 only goes in one way. You can see there's a little notch. It's going to go in at almost like a 45 degree angle here. And it just slots in place like that. And this little screw system just notches right over the top of it. That's awesome. So from there, we're gonna put our cooler back on and button it up. Now I did mention that we'd get back to this PCIe area. Again, a reminder, remove the plastic off of these thermal pads and also off of here. You may look at this and say, wow, look at all those slots for storage. And you'd be right, there's plenty of it. That said, a word of caution. You'll have to consult your motherboard manual if it has one, thank you, Gigabyte. This slot may be shared, and if you populate it, it may actually disable these slots, one or both of them. It does that to protect the number of PCIe lanes. You only have so many that have access to the processor. So populating all of these may actually cut off PCIe lanes or it may revert them to a slower speed. As such, you may be hamstringing your high speed storage or you may be hamstringing worse, your GPU. So you're gonna to wanna to check your motherboard manual and make sure 
that populating these is a wise move. Realistically, you're probably gonna to wanna to populate this one, this one, and this one, and ignore these bottom two. But again, check your motherboard manual if you have one, and you'll be able to figure that out for yourself. Now, just because I'm gonna use M.2 storage doesn't mean that that's the only storage you can use. If you do have SSDs or you have some other device that you need to use, like an optical drive of some sort, there is an option. There are four small connectors here. These connectors are for those devices. So if you still need those, they are available on the system. Looking at the rest of the board, we have a number of USB ports. We've got these two here that are just plain USB. That's probably 3.0. Up here we have USB 3.2. And then we have this silver one right here. That's USB 3.2 Gen 2 by 2. Horrible naming convention, but suffice to say, 5 gigs, 10 gigs, 20 gigs. So which port you use matters. These two will probably run to the top of the case, and this will probably have a connector that runs maybe to the back of the system. We'll have to see when we start assembling. But suffice it to say, which USB port you use really does make a difference, especially when you're using devices that can take full advantage of that kind of speed. Finishing things out, we have the usual sort of connectors for your fan pump, your fans, your CPU header. You've got some uh, RGB ports here. You've got a TPM port here. Um, I don't know if that's actually populated. It looks unpopulated. TPM is the uh, security chip that's becoming a requirement for a lot of places, uh, for a lot of businesses, and also uh, is fully kind of integrated into Windows 11. And then you have uh, yeah, pretty much ancient audio over here, and uh, yeah, more LED ports there. So that kind of covers the, the motherboard. Let's open up this processor and get the AIO loaded. Do not be worried about putting in a processor. This is actually far simpler than you think. I will demonstrate. We're gonna push on this little spring steel here. You're gonna have to push pretty hard. Don't worry, you're not gonna break anything. With that open, you can then open this cage and this little plastic thing here will pop right off, okay? Now these are called zero insertion force sockets, which is to say you're not gonna be pushing on anything. What you're actually gonna be doing is merely laying the processor in place. I like Intel's packaging. It's almost like a little wafer, like the real uh, full-size wafers that all these processors come off of. We're gonna try and keep this very clean so I don't have to clean it any further. They should come clean from the manufacturer. So we're gonna grip it from the side. And there is a small set of notches. I'm gonna try and show this to the camera if I can. There's a small set of notches on the top and bottom. They match the notches on the top and bottom of the socket. Generally speaking, you're gonna be putting the writing right side up towards the top of the motherboard, and it will only go in one way. From there, we're gonna close the cage. Again, no pressure. This little latch will come down on top of these two little hooks here. And we're gonna push that shut. It goes underneath that little lever again. Done, processor installed. The next part is gonna be thermal paste, and then we're gonna put on the all-in-one cooler. All right, let's get this out of the way. And then we're gonna slide this out of frame and we're gonna unbox the AIO. I don't know what the opposite of ASMR is for me. It's that sound. So I went ahead and removed everything out of the packaging so you don't have to deal with that. So let's get started. Let's take a look at the fans. The Pure Loop 2FX comes with three 120 millimeter fans. They're ARGB, as you can see here. A in ARGB, by the way, stands for addressable. We'll get to that in a second. 
There's two power lead, or there's two leads coming off of this, one for power and one for RGB. So again, three 120 millimeter fans. Um, because it's Be Quiet, they've got all the grommets in there to make sure that this does in fact stay quiet. All of these are gonna connect to this block, and this is where that addressable part comes in. So the block's nice and easy. Uh, they do include some double-sided tape, but having dealt with this quite a bit in my life, that's a pass. But they also include some mounting screws. So you can mount this directly to your case, and then that's not gonna go anywhere. So back to the block. Uh, each port here, you've got a pair of them. One's gonna be the power, and the other one's gonna be the ARGB connector. So all of your devices can plug into this one block, and then out of the other end of it, you've got an RPM spot here. This RPM lead is gonna to go to the motherboard, so the motherboard can directly control the fan speed. Out of the other side, we have power that's gonna to go to a SATA connector that's gonna to go to your PSU. And then you've got a header here that's again for control to the motherboard and then RGB there. So the combination of all of this gives you a nice, easy connectable ARGB block that you can physically mount as opposed to just using tape and it's then addressable not only from a lighting perspective but also from a fan speed. Next up is the radiator itself. We have a 360 millimeter radiator and the water block. So this water block is what's going to allow the glycol, which is right here, to be carried from the radiator directly to the front cold plate here, which is right over your processor, and then cool it and carry it to the return. So I'll show you how to mount these a little bit later. Um, it is nice that they included more glycol. It's very rare for your radiator to outlive the rest of the case. You'll probably swap this out with something newer and better five years down the line before you ever need this. But should you need it, there you go. Watch enough videos with me and you've seen me throw instructions like this all over the place. Not the case here. With the Pure Loop 2 comes a nice instruction booklet and it's going to directly address the question of what to do with this large bag of stuff. Now, this particular AIO can be used for both AMD and Intel processors and they're nicely labeled. So we're not using AMD today, so we're gonna set this AMD bag aside. Then we've got a rather large Intel bag. So I'm gonna unpack these for a second to avoid that crinkling sound once again and I'll show you which parts we need. Opening the booklet, you'll see there's a section specifically lays out all of the different LGA processor types that this particular AIO will support. So I'm gonna set that right there. It says that we will need this plate. Again, things are very nicely labeled. I know that I need these arms because it says Intel 17XX and 18XX, and we're gonna be using 17 in this case but nice to know that it does have some forward compatibility with future products. So we're gonna set this other Intel bag out of the way. We know we need this plate. We know we need these screws and these caps. These are for mounting the fans, so we'll set those aside for now. Now we know which parts we need. So we're gonna go ahead and bring the motherboard back in, clear some of this up, and start to get it mounted. So the first thing we need to do is prepare the motherboard. We're gonna be mounting the AIO, and there's a lot of weight here. We need to be able to put a plate underneath this to make sure that it all stays put. So that plate that we saw earlier is gonna go in these four holes. One, two, three, four. There are four screws that go into the plate and they go into kind of a, a little locking channel. Here's a trick. We're gonna use painter's tape. That makes sure that these screws stay in place, but it doesn't add a lot of gummy residue to the build. We don't want that either. We also don't wanna lose these. Then I'm gonna take two more pieces of tape and just have them ready to go. So I'm gonna flip this over. And I'm gonna drop this in place. One, two, three, four, okay? Then we're gonna use one long strip to hold this from moving on each side. Now when I flip this over, everything should stay in place. Just like that, those four screws are ready to go. So if you learn nothing else from all of this, pick up the painter's tape trick. Now remember we talked about clearances, right? Not knowing how far the AIO is going to stick over here. With a traditional cooler where you might have a bunch of fans and stuff, that might make things very, very crowded. 
here, you've just got this small block, but there's still something to be mindful of. You do have these two uh, pipes that are coming off of this. So you need to kind of eyeball it and say, all right, if that's sitting there, am I gonna have trouble hitting my memory? In this case, no. So we don't need to really worry about installing the RAM. Even if I were, I'm putting them in these slots, so they're still out of the way. So we're gonna kind of simulate this a little bit. We know that the screws are gonna end up on top and on bottom, so we're just gonna drop these in place and make sure everything lines up, which it does. So the next thing to do is the part that makes people really nervous, and that's putting thermal paste on the processor. All right, the last step is mounting this block onto the system here. Now, think about where your system's gonna orient this AIO and kind of think about how you're gonna route your, your tubing. So in this case, I think I'm good with this mounting. So I'm gonna slide this here and drop this right in place. As long as I apply even pressure, I don't screw one side down all the way and then the other. You're going to want to kind of alternate, even pressure, even pressure. Just like that, fully mounted. Turn this to the side so you can see it a little bit better. But there we go. There is the Pure Loop 2FX 360 millimeter fan and AIO installed and ready to go. But if you take a look here, you can see what I was talking about with clearances. Thankfully, this does not interfere with that first slot, so I still can reach those if I need to later without having to remove anything like the I.O. The next thing we're gonna do is mount these fans into the radiator. Now the question always is, well, I don't know what direction they need to go. Well, it's kind of easy when they're RGB. Face the RGB towards the inside of your case and you're facing the right direction. The next thing you need to think about though is where's your routing for your cabling gonna go. So think about that when you orient this inside the radiator. You know, you obviously don't want a bunch of cables hanging out the front like this. You're gonna wanna kinda hide the sin in the back. So we're gonna mount them like so, where the wires are all headed rearward so we can hide them behind the case. So I'm gonna go ahead and mount those up. You've seen a mount on a fan before. It's not really all that difficult. Put the long screws in the long holes, and we're done. Well, I have to say this is one of the easiest AIOs I've ever installed, so let's work on getting it in the case. Now, the objective is to be able to put everything inside this 802, so let's get it open and start figuring out if that's possible. This could be an interesting experiment if I can't get it all in the case. I'd like to thank FlexiSpot once again. This desk is amazing for doing builds. Being able to lower this thing and raise it as I see fit makes for some really easy assembly. I can always put this thing exactly where I need it. Obviously not reviewing a FlexiSpot desk, but any chance I get a, uh, an opportunity to tell you guys about it, I'm gonna do it. Sure is pretty. Also in the boxes, mystery bag and mystery box number two. So we get all this stuff opened up. I'm gonna get this thing cleaned off. Looks like there's some scuffs on the side here and then we'll get rolling again. All right, so all cleaned up. The uh, sides were just scuffed from where I inelegantly removed it from the box, but all good to go. Uh, no cracks, no damage, anything like that. Uh, also inside the styrofoam, you've got these. These are two uh, feet that can go underneath 
the case. So like so, probably more like so. But we'll, we'll see about putting those on later, unless I want to have it sit on the floor. Uh, inside this box, looks like we've got all of the various uh, fans and filters, some mount screws. Thank you for including those. I am shocked at the number of companies that don't include screws anymore. Um, some Velcro strips, branded Be Quiet, and then looks like a front grill. So we're going to set all this stuff aside, and then we'll take a closer look at the case. Now, if you've been building systems for a while, you've probably got boxes of those little screws that you screw into the back of the case, right? Those things strip out. And after a while, you're ordering new ones or you're just like, I don't know what to do. Do I need to retap the case because I just can't screw them in anymore? Well, here's a much better solution. On the back of this, for both sides of the case, there's a push button and the entire side panel comes off. Better still, the same thing applies to the other side. So for both sides, you have a simple push button release. And on this side, we have a fairly thick amount of sound damping, as well as a little bit of extra room for cabling and everything else. There's nothing worse than squishing cabling, especially as we add more and more power to our systems. And this gives us at least a little bit of extra breathing room. So I'm looking forward to that. If you do intend to use an AIO instead of air cooling, then one of the things you need to look at in a case is whether it'll fit. Now, this particular case supports up to 420 millimeters. You'll do that in the front where it's the most tall. Uh, up top, you can support 360 millimeters, which is the size of the AIO we chose. But if it were going to be a problem, we could have also mounted it in the front just by relocating some of these fans. So you have options, and that's one of the things that I like about the Be Quiet case series is that all of their cases are very flexible. Now looking at the front of the case, you've got this solid piece. That's gonna be great for acoustics, but not so much for airflow. So we're gonna turn this to the side here. And that comes right off. You can see you've got that acoustic paneling inside to keep things nice and quiet. There's a nice little grill here, so you can remove that to clean any dust that might accumulate in your fans. If you're not doing that, you need to do that periodically. Otherwise, what are we doing here, folks? And included is a second grill. So we've got this nice mesh flow uh, through grill. We can just slide that in place. And just like that, now we've got airflow. If you're still concerned about airflow, you have these top two plates on the top of the case. These also come off and are also acoustically dampened. So these slide right off and then we can take this small little grill here and drop that right in place like so. And now you've got even more airflow. Heading around the back of the system, you've got a hard drive cage down here. These screws make it removable, so you can slide that out and put in uh, spinning platters. I do like that they're nice and hidden. You don't have to occupy these spaces up here, but if you were inclined, you could knock these out and put in uh, five and a quarters up there. Uh, more realistically, you're probably going to use SSDs. So you've got a nice little detachable SSD uh, thing. You just mount your SSD there, drop that on. Same thing with this. You've got this whole bracket that you can remove. You can mount your SSDs and you can drop them right back in, right on the back of the motherboard. Uh, also back here, we have the first LED uh, header here. So these are connecting to the fans that are already included. Uh, the ones that are included with this case are not. Uh, the light wings like this. So we'll be removing those and replacing them with these to make it the most RGB build probably that I've ever done. As a follow-up, the little box that's hidden down here is in fact a hard drive cage, should you need it. We don't. Rounding out the airflow, there is also a bottom... There we go screen so you can keep your power supply also clean. This will allow you to pull that out, clean this off. This should be part of your regular maintenance. Just because you can't see it doesn't mean you should neglect it. Swing and a miss on installing that again. There we go. So make sure that you do clean those periodically. 
Headed inside the case is actually pretty roomy and there's a number of features that you should be aware of. So this bracket for mounting the, the radiator can be removed so you can mount that to the bracket and then just install the bracket. Uh, that's nice and simple, so that's a nice feature. It also supports vertical mounting of GPUs. Unfortunately, there's only two slots and well, these days we're, we're using three or more. So this is not gonna work for a 4000 series, but it will work for any of the 3000 series. Um, I find that I end up not using the vertical mount anyway because it requires special hardware and also it blocks off the other PCIe slots, which I actually use. So that's a no-go for me. Uh, this part here, this shroud does come off. Uh, that way you can get access to all of your cabling and then this obviously hides all of your sin. Uh, these come off, so you can install another 120 millimeter fan uh, should you need to. Uh, realistically, you're probably gonna use that if you have a hard drive underneath here or you're worried about airflow with your power supply, uh, but ultimately, probably not necessary for most folks if you're not using hard drives. Messing around aside, I did remove those so you can see all of those uh, airflow panels are all open now. Now, this is another one of those tips from building systems as long as I have. There's a big question as to whether I should install the power supply or the motherboard next. I'm telling you, it's the motherboard. The power supply is gonna be very heavy, especially at 1500 watts. So do yourself a favor, don't break your neck trying to whip this thing around with a power supply in it. Install your motherboard, get everything else done, and then put in your power supply. I went ahead and took the liberty of removing that removable top plate. So this is where the fans are gonna sit for the AIO, as well as the radiator, just like this. So we're going to flip it over on its face and we're going to drop all of our screws in right like so. So I'm just going to grab these and get a few anchored and we'll figure out exactly where we want it. I do like a little bit more clearance between the base of the case and the floor. So I'm going to install these feet. They have just a little push tab, though I doubt once I put these on if I'll ever take them off. But they are just kind of a friction fit. They just kind of wiggle their way in place. Just like that. And now I've got a little bit of clearance. It's better if you can do this with two people. But we're going to do it solo. We're going to kind of lay the motherboard in place, like so. And then we're gonna slide the AIO Get a little bit lower so you can see. Hopefully just slide this into position. It's definitely a tight fit. There we go. Make sure we get all the wires out of the way. <laughs> and of course the motherboard itself. Clearances are gonna be real tight on that. That's okay. Looks like we are in position. So I'm gonna go ahead and stand this up carefully once I put the screws into the motherboard, otherwise they'll go flying. And then we should be good. All right, I like to be transparent about these things. Once I tried to mount it, I realized that I had it backwards. So this larger plate portion back here has to go towards the rear, and this has to go towards the front, otherwise you're not gonna have enough clearance for the fans. That was my fault. I'd rather just show you that than try to hide it. I'm not gonna reshoot it, because I think that these kind of learning things are important. It's part of getting good at building machines. Not everything's gonna go perfectly. And I think it's important to show that. So here I am fixing my oops. Let's get the rest of these mounted. Now you may just have noticed that I, I loosened all of these because these didn't align. There's a reason why I kind of alternate like you'd put on the bolts on a tire and it's for exactly this reason. If you got one that suddenly doesn't align, it's because you did the dumb thing that I just did and did them in order. Best thing to do is get each one started. 
you can lock down your four corners and then kind of work your way towards the middle. That'll ensure everything is equally locked down without anything being overly tightened and certainly nothing stripped. Little things that I've learned not to do and I did anyway. We all make mistakes. This is mine for the day. All right, that's done. Now we'll just slide it in place, fingers crossed. And we can get back to actually mounting the board. This is meant to drop in like a, like a sliding drawer. I'm here to tell you, ah, it's not quite as easy as that. or I'm doing it wrong. That's certainly a possibility as well, but it's very, very tight. Make sure all these cables are out of the way. This should drop down just a slight, slight bit more. Just there we go. Perfect. All right. Once I get a screw in there, this will stay put, but that's the AIO in place, just like that. Back in the 80s, there was these commercials that you'd see come on that would talk about how to get into drawing. And in those, they would talk about drawing an owl. And those videos would start off with a person drawing a circle and then drawing a smaller circle. And then somehow they'd end up with this entirely awesome like Disney style owl. So when somebody says draw the rest of the owl, that's what they're talking about. We did a little bit of draw the rest of the owl here. I usually don't do that, but I'm sure you don't want to watch me mount fans. I've, run it. I've went ahead and mounted all three of those uh, RGB, ARGB fans and on the back uh, we're starting to do some cable management. It doesn't look like it but I promise we are. We've gone ahead and mounted that ARGB header here and here is the second one. Uh, this only addresses six. I probably could have run all six to this but uh, this one does come with the second one so I went ahead and mounted the second one and used both ARGB LED outs. So uh, now I just have to connect power to those and this thing should be able to light up like a Christmas tree. So that really is the next step. Um, you can see from the inside, we are pretty much done with mounting all of the important bits other than the daughter board cards like the GPU. So next up, let's power it. This particular PSU is an 80 titanium. I have not done a primer on what those mean. I really should sit down and do that one of these days, but it is certainly the highest rated one that I've ever used. And it's also the largest. I've never used a 1500 watt power supply. This should last me well into whatever craziness that Nvidia does next or AMD for that matter. I feel like I should have a drum roll for this. Very fancy packaging. Here we have what I suspect is the, the yep, PSU itself. It is modular, of course. At this uh, level, it definitely should be. And as you can see, it has individual connectors for drive, the motherboard, P8, P8, PCI, PCI, PCI. So this thing will definitely handle really anything that I could throw at it for years to come. So we're gonna go ahead and get this thing unpacked and into the case. We'll be right back. I started unpacking the power supply and then I realized it probably would be a bit of a disservice to ignore all of the great things that are going on in this box. So rather than just draw the rest of the owl, I am gonna take a moment and point out a few things. So just briefly, the 80 plus titanium means that this is Correct me if I'm wrong here, I believe it's 97.4% uh, efficient at 100% load. So uh, the lower you go in the scale, the less efficient that power supply is gonna be. You don't wanna run things when they're you know, not being efficient. That's just poor for power usage, so there's that. Um, this does have a Silent Wings fan in it. Uh, it's not an RGB one, which great, that's fine. It's gonna be pointing downwards anyway. Um, also, it is modular. The ports on here, let me flip it back over. 
Um, these drive ports are for all of your drive cables. And I want to point out, it comes with a number of zip strips and such. Your drive cables are labeled drive cables, so you know which ones are which. If you are new to all of this, that can be pretty handy. But if you are running a bunch of hard drives, or optical drives, or really anything other than NVMe, you're going to need some of these cables. I'll need a few of them for the ARGB header uh, from earlier, so I'll be running at least one of these. Motherboard, that's going to go to the main board. P8. Now this is used for some specific types of motherboards that we're not going to be using. Uh, Baby ATX, uh, LPX, I think are the other types, but nice to know that there's an option, but we're not going to be using those. MB, that goes to the main board. There's two of these connectors. That's that big fat cable that goes kind of on the side, and this one goes up top. PCIe, there's a number of those. That's going to be for, obviously, graphics cards. And uh, I do have an added little goodie here. These weren't available when I started this build, but they are now. I'll give you the part number. It is Charlie Papa Hotel 6610. And if you are running a fourth gen, or sorry, a 4000 series GPU from NVIDIA, you're going to want this. So rather than running that four headed Hydra adapter, this is two connectors to the PSU, single connector to the GPU. So we'll be connecting that, but it needs just one cable and it's going to lock, it's going to look a lot better in our case. And then obviously if you were running PCI, uh, or sorry, if you were running SLI, this would be a, a, a PSU to do that. Um, underneath, there's another differentiator. This is main cables. And this is the part that I wanted to point out. When I buy PSUs from other manufacturers, typically I get precisely and only exactly what I would need to build a machine. This has, frankly, a ton of cables. So if I were to ever need a specific type of build cable, I've got it. There are times that I go back and I need uh, another type of cable or I need a second cable. Um, there are uh, measurement devices that are used for measuring uh, voltage at the GPU level. You need extra cables for that. So normally I'd have to go buy them. They're in this box. So that is a really nice addition. Uh, it's just, I just wanted to point out the quality and I'm pretty amazed with that. And I thought it would take a second and point it out. Um, pulling up the, uh, the list of other goodies here, fully digital controlled and fully Brit. Oh, there was one other port I wanted to point out that as mentioned here, uh, OCK. So that is for overclocking. Um, if you wanted access to all of the uh, PCIe rails uh, separately, all the 12 volt rails, that's how you do that with that overclocking key. That enables uh, all six of them. And then one massive 12 volt rail, which obviously is what we're gonna use this for. Fully meshed PSU for uh, airflow with a redesigned funnel shaped air inlet. Japanese 105 C capacitors. That's great. This is going to generate heat. Aluminum case, that's going to be also great for heat dissipation. But the one that uh, really stuck out to me, and I wanted to also mention, 10-year power supply warranty. It's nice to see them uh, stand behind their, their device. I don't have power supplies typically that long, but this may be one that I actually keep with me for another build. You'd be forgiven for thinking that the next thing we're going to do is install this power supply. But again, this is not light and I want to be able to move the case as much as possible for as long as possible. So instead, we're going to focus on getting all of these cables, our main board cables, our additional power cables at the top, and make sure that everything else is run and cable tied before I put in the power supply. That way I can maximize the amount of time that I spend with as little weight as possible. As I mentioned inside the box, everything's all split up. So we've got these two main board cables. Those will go up to the very top of the motherboard here. We've got the really large uh, kind of primary power cable. That's gonna go obviously in the center of the board. And then one, two, three, four, five PCIe cables. So some to spare. As well as zip ties and Velcro, some additional plates for uh, the, uh, these, these plates, as well as uh, some spare screws and just, uh, oh, and even some combs in here so you can clean up your cabling. So they've kind of thrown in the whole kitchen sink here. It really should make for a really nice system when we're done. At this point, I've got the 12 volt rail for the 4090 all wired through. 
and at least some semblance of cable management back here. So now it's time to take the power supply and put it in. Uh, there is one other thing that's in the bag. Remember that overclock uh, thing that I mentioned just a second ago? There's a small plate here with a switch on it. Uh, that's gonna enable that rail. Uh, so this is gonna run to that power supply and we will mount that after we have everything else already in the system. So for now, we're gonna set that aside. We'll flip this around, get this mounted, and I'll be right back. Now, one thing about this case, and maybe they heard my complaints on their other series, but uh, on some of their other cases, you have uh, a plate like this that you remove, but then there's a space about this big. Your power supply slides inside and there's a little connector cable that makes up the, dist the distance. Not a fan of that. Uh, it actually caused a lot of problems with trying to get things in place down below in terms of cabling. It left me a little bit less room than I like. This is much more simple. It's these four screws to remove this rear plate. And that is going to screw onto the back of the power supply. Slides in place. And then you tighten down the screws once again it's, and it's all locked in. For the orientation on the power supply, you have the fan here. We're gonna point that down. Remember we have that filter that's down here at the bottom. We also want to push hot air down. So we're gonna slide it in like so. Uh, before I mount any of this though, I wanna make sure that all these wires are connected and that everything reaches just fine before, otherwise I'm kind of trying to fish my hands in there. It's much easier if I kind of do it on the table and run everything through the rear of the system and get it all kind of in place. And then I can slide it all in and mount it down. Now, odds are you're probably not assembling this inside of a place where you're filming, so you might need a flashlight or, and I'll leave a link in the description for these, for about 20 bucks, you can get these little guys. They direct LED light to wherever my knuckles are pointing, and they're gonna be incredibly invaluable in seeing where the clips are on these black cables and on the back of the black power supply. So again, I'll leave a link for you to pick these up. I highly recommend them. Even if you're not using them for a cable assembly, just dropping something behind something. This is really handy so you can see where you're grabbing. All right, so I've got everything all wired up. I've not finished my cable management. It's still kind of messy back there. But the last thing I wanna do is get everything all trussed up before I test. So we're gonna do the first post. One very large proprietary cable. This is almost like a server cable. Given how much power this pushes, I have no doubt. Moment of truth. There we go. That's all the fans on top. That's all the fans in the front. Everything's moving air. I'd call that a successful test. I'm gonna go ahead and clean up the rest of my wiring. Then we're gonna start slotting components and finish this up. I finished up the wiring on the back of this. It's to my satisfaction. I'm not teaching a class in wiring. So just know that you do have a little bit of extra space with this case. There's a tiny bit of clearance that you can run cables like this and not have to squish them to the side or do any sort of like vice grip thing to get the case back on. It fits on nicely and it still has plenty of clearance. So that's appreciated. Uh, one area where I didn't have a lot of clearance though are these plates. So I went ahead and put those back on, but as you can see, I skipped this last one. With that RGB lighting down here, that light LED uh, lead, there's just not enough space for this. Maybe you can make it work, but for me, it's not worth it. Um, there is space here that you could wire uh, additional fans, but I tend to use this bottom PCIe slot for video capture. So I'm gonna leave that empty just for my purposes. It's your case, knock yourself out. Uh, so the only thing that's really left, I went ahead and loaded the RAM already. So that just leaves the GPU. Now we have a 3070 Ti, we have a 3090, and we have a 4090. These are obviously gonna fit, no problem. Uh, these came out at the same time that this case was released. I will be interested to see how well it accommodates this though. So just one moment and I'm gonna make it appear. Now I realized as I mounted this and I said that about the cabling, you guys would give me no end of grief. So, all right. There's the cabling as it is finished. Uh, you'll note that I do have a good bit of slack here in that GPU cable. And I've made sure that I'm not bending this in any crazy way. Uh, there's a company called Cable Mods. I'm gonna reach out to them. They do have a 90 degree angle uh, cable. I'm gonna pick that up because I think I like that better than this. 
uh, it just drops straight from there and straight down, then you can run a normal, a normal cable to it. So it alleviates the pressure on this. Now that said, these things are rated for 30 poles. That's the same as every GPU, pretty much as far back as you can imagine. I pull a lot of GPUs because I test a lot of GPUs. You're probably gonna do this once, maybe twice. So don't lose any sleep over this. Just make sure it's snug and it's plugged in completely and it's not bent at some weird angle and you'll be perfectly fine. The good news is, uh, let's see if I can get a head on there. You'll notice you can't see that cable at all. It's gonna fit perfectly in here and not hit the glass. So I'm gonna go ahead and button up this side and I'm gonna do it live. Again, otherwise you guys would give me no end of the grief. Just like that. As I said, it fits on nicely with no need to shove any cables or anything else. So I'm gonna grab the glass. We'll put the fan uh, covers on, the magnetic fan covers, so we can maximize the airflow. After that, it should be wiring it up to my screen, which is slightly off screen, and we'll do our first, uh, we'll do our first boot. I told you guys are all into this, so. Ah, oh, fail. Perfect. And I'm not gonna end up on the front page of Reddit with a completely shattered glass case, so let's get this on. Everything's all assembled, we're all wired up, so the only thing left to do, power it up. Fingers crossed. While this boots, there are a couple of things that I think I would change if I were to rebuild this. Um, from the front, I can see, let's see if I can get a shot of this. You can see that I didn't quite line up the fans quite the way that I should. I probably should move this up, so I'll reopen this and move those. Looks like we went right into the BIOS, which is great. Um, everything else seems to be fine. I probably will put another fan back here uh, just for additional airflow. Uh, this is dead silent, so I'm not concerned about adding more noise. Uh, we'll see how it uh, reacts under load. We are on the BIOS. Uh, there's plenty of BIOS revisions to update. I'm in F4 and I wanna say they're like at F11. So plenty of uh, work ahead of me. XMP is disabled. So we're gonna go ahead and change that. DDR5, 6000. Uh, everything else after that is gonna be loading windows and kind of continuing on that path until everything's up and running to run benchmarks. That's uh, well past what I'm gonna do with this video. But I did have that one last thing that I wanted to add this. There are a number of ways that you can accomplish this same thing. All this is is a tiny little screen that can display a ton of information about my system. Uh, this particular one is already preloaded. It has a nice little uh, SD card that's loaded with the software. And what it will do is it'll display my fan speeds, CPU temperatures, GPU temperature, RAM speed, just about anything else I want to throw at it, and it'll display it on this tiny little screen. So I'm going to mount this somewhere inside the case, or perhaps just have it sitting on a little pedestal up here. This is handy for me for keeping an eye on things while I'm benchmarking, or really just kind of for curiosity's sake. The thing that I like about this, though, it does require Windows, but it doesn't require an HDMI slot. So a lot of these Raspberry Pi solutions uh, require uh, some sort of connection to Windows on top of also needing an HDMI port, which means either routing it in some weird fashion out of your case and then back in. But this one is just USB. So I'm not gonna demonstrate it today. Um, I will throw some video at the very end once I've got it working. Uh, so by the time you see this, you'll see it, but uh, I'm not gonna demonstrate it today because I still need to load Windows. But it's really as simple as plugging in the USB and then plugging it into the machine and then it's off to the races. So I'm looking forward to seeing this in action and you'll be seeing it in just a couple of seconds. So thank you very much for joining me on this build. This has been pretty amazing. I am blown away at how comfortable this case is, even though it's significantly smaller than my previous case. And it's certainly kept up with just about anything I can throw at it. It will be interesting to see if they update this particular case model for a three slot design for the uh, vertical mount GPU. But for now, I'm pretty happy with where I'm at. So. 
Thanks again for watching. I'm Ron Burke, editor-in-chief for GamingTrend.com. Stay safe out there, and we'll see you again very soon.